Hey everyone, it's Nicole and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we will be discussing paying off credit card debt. So by far, credit card debt is the worst debt you could possibly have. And that is simply because it's an unsecured debt. What that means is unlike a mortgage or a car loan, your credit card debt isn't tied to anything. They can't take your car away from you. They can't take your house away from you. So with that being said, your interest rates go through the roof. So where your mortgage rate may be 4% interest, your credit card rate is 18 to 20% interest because they can't take anything away from you. So if you don't pay while they can't take anything away from you, they are definitely getting all of their money with that interest. Credit card debt sucks. There's no other way to put it. It sucks. Like I said, it's the worst kind of debt. I will tell you my credit card horror story. So when I was 19, um, I was very responsible. I was responsible in the sense that I was going uh, to college full time. I was working a job full time. So to me, I was a big girl. I was an adult. So I decided that I needed a credit card and a brand new car because how else am I going to build my credit without getting into debt? That's what they tell you, right? That's what we've been told for a long, long time, which is why a lot of us are in a really not great situation right now. So when I was 19, I bought a really expensive Ford Mustang, which was like 400 bucks a month. I went ahead and got a Victoria's Secret credit card. I didn't run the credit card up, but I definitely kept a revolving balance on this card. I was very, very good at paying my loans on time. I was never late. But like I said, I was working full time. I was going to school full time. I was working crazy hours. You know, when you're 19, 20 years old, you have friends, you're not sleeping. You're just living a crazy life. And I ended up paying my Victoria's Secret bill one day late. Me thinking that like, it's not that big of a deal that I'm paying it one day late. I received an email saying that since I was late that they were jacking up my interest rates, which were already insane from like 19 to 20% a month all the way up to 29% a month because I was late and I defaulted and blah, 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 a bunch of legal jargon that I didn't understand at the time because I was 20 and kind of was what it was. So that was my first experience with thinking maybe being in debt, maybe owing someone else money isn't the best idea. It still took me a couple years after this to really get into the whole paying off debt and everything because I was accruing student loans and I just thought, whatever, like I'll pay it whenever, it's not a big deal. So here I am with student loans and credit card debt and car notes and all of those things that are holding you back in life, but I am paying them off, you can too, and here's a step-by-step -step of how. Step one, step one, the most important step, are you ready? Stop spending, stop doing it. Do not use those credit cards anymore, don't do it. Take them out of your wallet, keep them in a drawer somewhere, uh, I know a lot of people nowadays have them saved to their Amazon accounts or to different accounts. Take those out, delete them from whatever app that you have them saved in so you do not use them. Stop spending. That is the most important thing you can do. They're already causing you enough trouble, especially if you're using them for everyday things like groceries and going out to eat and clothes because now you're paying interest on groceries. So when you break it down like that, it literally makes no sense. There is no good outcome for using credit cards. I don't care if you get cash back, whatever it is, you're still paying interest, you're still losing money. Just pay for it in cash. If you can't afford it, guess what? You can't afford it. Okay, so that's it. Step one is stop spending. We're on a roll. <laughs> Step two is know what you owe. I will say these next two steps are serious eye openers. You have to face your fears and face your credit and face the mistakes that you've made. And it's not easy. You have to face the damage that's been done and then also the hard work that you need to do to fix it. So I've said this in other videos, I'm a pen to paper type of girl. So get out a pencil, get out a piece of paper. I don't care if it's computer paper, whatever you have, a scrap piece of whatever and write down everything that you owe everyone. Now, this is just for credit card debt in this video, but if you wanna go ahead and include your student loans and all that in there, whatever you wanna do, whatever debt you wanna pay off, this is the starting point. Write down everything that you owe, and you're gonna write it down in order of smallest to largest. So if you owe Discover $2,000, and then you owe student loans that are $20,000, the Discover will go first, the student loans will be last, and you fill in whatever's in the middle. So we're gonna start with that lowest at first. It doesn't matter what your monthly payments are, it doesn't matter what your interest rate is, it's just the smallest loan that you have. 
Hopefully this is a small list with small numbers, but if it's not, that's okay. Still write everything down. It took you time to get into debt, so it's gonna take you time to get out of it. Step three is budgeting. This is the part where I sound a lot like Dave Ramsey. You need to be on a written budget. That's all there is to it. Go ahead and keep that pen and paper out because you are going to also use that to make a monthly written budget. I've said it before, I redo my budget every two weeks to make sure that I'm staying on track, but I'm insanely OCD. If you can do it once a month, that's absolutely fine. If you're not on a budget at all, this will be a big eye opener because you'll see exactly how much money you're wasting on things like going out to eat, on clothes, entertainment, things you don't need, Amazon, all that stuff. This will give you a really big wake up call of how much money you could be saving, you could be putting towards debt, and you're just not. Basically, this budget consists of everything that you spend money on, all of your bills, your food, all that stuff, and then a list of all of your incomes. And then hopefully your income is more than your bills. So hopefully your income is more than your outcome. Basically, every penny that's left over at the end of this month is going towards your smallest debt. So you're going to keep paying minimum payments on all of your other bills but just pay the minimum payments. Don't pay anything extra because we're putting all of our focus, all of our time, all of our extra money into that one first debt, that smallest debt. The monthly payment that you had going towards that debt will go into your next smallest debt and all that extra money will go into the next smallest debt. That is called the debt snowball. That is paying off debt 101. And who knows, maybe you have some really small debts that you're able to knock out in the first month or two to really get your debt snowball going. All right, step four is make that money. This is the part where people kind of look at you like you're crazy, like what is she doing? What is he doing? Why is he acting like this? I know because I get that look a lot. People think that I'm insane because I don't go out to eat a whole lot. I don't buy a lot of things. So we have been in our house for three years and I still have rooms that aren't finished because I don't want to go into credit card debt for it. I'm not perfect, we've definitely backslid a few times during this debt-free process, but I am very frugal. We don't go out to eat a lot, we don't buy things we don't need. I definitely don't like clutter in my house. So I'm cool with things not being finished, I'm cool with walls not being painted, I'm cool with you know having empty walls because I know that once I get out of debt, I'll be able to do a room exactly how I wanna do it. So I just kind of keep that in, in my mind as well, that me being frugal now and looking like I'm a crazy person now will benefit me later. Okay, so back to making money. Basically, the more money you have coming in, the more money you're able to put towards your debt. Mind blown, right? So this is basically where you hustle your butt off. You get a second job as a dishwasher or a server in a restaurant or a pizza delivery driver. This is where you have a yard sale during summer and sell literally everything you own. If it's not summer, get on eBay and sell everything you own. Get on Facebook Marketplace and sell all of this extra junk that you don't need. Because one, you will feel better knowing that you're getting this stuff that you don't use and don't need out of your house. It'll make your house look nicer. And then step two, you're also bringing money into the household that you are using to pay off debt. And that's such a good feeling. Trust me, I've done it. It is awesome. I know some people are stay-at-home parents, in which case you can see if you can pick up a couple kids and start a little daycare and charge some money for that. You can channel some energy into a new YouTube channel or an Etsy account doing something that you wanna do. This is also the part where you can kinda of go a little crazy and see how much money you can make, you know? You get really excited about this stuff. So start that YouTube channel if, if you've been thinking about it. Start that Etsy account for whatever talent you have. Use it and make it work for you. That's what a side hustle is. Anything that you can do to make money, do it. And it's twice as nice if you enjoy doing what you're doing. But even if it's something like delivering pizzas and you don't wanna do it forever, keep in mind that it's not forever. It's just for a couple months, six months to a year. Even if you're sacrificing for a year, knowing that you're paying off an extra $1,000 a month in debt is such a like calming and peaceful feeling and two you're about to be tired so you're gonna sleep good at night my husband and i both work full-time jobs so that's two full-time incomes coming in we both work part-time jobs mine is more seasonal his is more year-round but we have two part-time incomes coming in he's driven for uber and lyft and i've done postmates we've done a thousand different things to make extra money 
whether it be we were trying to pay for our wedding, we cash flowed our whole wedding, whether it was for purchasing a home and now we are paying off debt. So there are a lot of things that you can do. You just have to get creative, make it work for you. There's dog grooming businesses. I mean, people pay to watch other people play video games. I don't know, it's a crazy world. Do what you wanna do, do what makes you happy. And at the end of the day, you will be out of debt. So then you can honestly live your life like you want to live it. And just remember, you're not living like this forever. This is just a blip on the map where you've realized that you've messed up. And that's kind of that first step realizing, I shouldn't have done this. I'm gonna get myself out of this and really using all that motivation to restart your life. Use this energy and this momentum to really jumpstart the second half of your life where you're paying off your debt, you're gaining control of your finances, you're becoming more financially literate, and it will bring you so much peace. I will say that we are halfway through our debt paying process. It is just so much more peaceful. We see a lot of couples struggling financially and fighting about money all the time. And it's such a hard subject and it causes rifts in not just spouses, but family lives. And if you can eliminate just that one stress, just imagine like how amazing that would feel. So again, work your butt off. It is not forever. And is it worth 12 months of not going out to eat, of not buying brand new outfits and maybe skipping a vacation or two? I think so. And even though we're only halfway through right now, I feel like we are so much better prepared for our future and our retirement. And we're so much more optimistic and positive because we know that the money that we're making now is making headway for our future to be that much more successful. So as always, please let me know if you guys have any questions. You can email me if you aren't comfortable commenting and I will answer. So please let me know if you guys have any questions. And if you haven't subscribed, like, turn on the bell, all that fun YouTube stuff. So as always, remember to make good choices. Do not listen to those voices because the only voice that matters is yours. Bye guys.